Hello, everybody. It's Julia Hummingbird Jewel, and this is my 15th show, Solutions, a book review show for mind readers. And today I have two authors. We have Beth Mund and Barrett Stelver, and their beautiful book, Living Beyond Fear sacred letters from the afterlife but before we get started like every show we feature a cause and that's because my mission statement is to teach love by being an example of love and what better way than to showcase authors that have spiritual messages find out a little bit about who they are and what's important to them so they chose the cause of heifer international and for 75 years, Hefner International has empowered millions to go from poverty to self-reliance. And they do that through gifts of livestock, seeds, and training. So they don't just uh, feed people. They teach people how to feed themselves. And uh, their goal in every project is sustainability. So their project partners achieve self-reliance. So like every show, I always put the Facebook page and the website will be in the YouTube notes. So the Facebook Live gets converted to YouTube. My channel is Hummingbird Jewel. So subscribe so you don't miss a show. And maybe that might be something, a cause that you're interested in. I so, I'm so passionate about the spiritual principle of service, tithing, giving back. Okay, it's time to meet my authors. We're going to start with Beth. Beth, wave your hand. <laughs> so Beth was, Beth was a skeptic most of her life. She was introduced to the beliefs of Judaism uh, while growing up, but she truly didn't believe in the power of prayer or the afterlife. But her belief system was challenged when she experienced a stillborn baby boy. And during this abscess of grief, she began a spiritual awakening and she sought out a counselor and his name was Brian Weiss. I know him, I've read his book, Many Lives. And then she embarked on this voracious journey that encompassed very many gifted spiritual teachers and that kind of built on her education in psychology so she also shares a little about how her uh, child abuse um, came into play her survival skills and the tools that she learned as a child such as the ability to disassociate by leaving her body created an opening, a space, and it ignited her intuition and the ability for her to connect with the spiritual realm. She's a wife and a mother of three beautiful children and two dogs. She's certified in Reiki and wellness coaching, and she holds a BS in psychology from George Washington University and an MS in psychology from Nova Southeastern University. So now let's meet Barrett. Okay, so Barrett grew up believing in God. And after college graduation, she embarked upon a career directing a student exchange program between Japan and the United States. She got married, had twins, and her life was full and amazing until the year 2010. She started to have some physical problems. Well, she was diagnosed with MS, multiple sclerosis. And she began to experience physical symptoms that worsened. And she had lesions on her brain and her spine. So while un enduring unimaginable experiences during this time, she began to form an incredible connection to the unseen. And she started to recall visions from her youth when she had sent spirits and visions of departed loved ones. During her ordeal, she received two messages clearly. One, you are not alone. And two, there is nothing to fear. So she began to overcome. She started gaining her strength, her mobility. She's walking her dog summer. She's driving again. But then the unimaginable happened. 
her 14-year-old daughter, Sarah, was diagnosed with cancer, a rare cancer. So she was challenged by these events in her lives, and she began to polarize, gaining an understanding that everything in the world consisted of both good and bad, and that there was a purpose. But after her daughter's recovery, she began to start seeking, and she enrolled in a class with Patricia Farrell. Farrell, and she's a gifted medium, and that's where she met Beth. She also had an experience when she was viewing a photograph and she received a profound communication with the afterlife. And once again, she lost mobility in one of her legs. So through an intense MRI experience, which by the way, showed no MS lesions, I believe that's right. She would have an event that would catapult her into her most profound spiritual experience of her life, which led to the opening of the floodgates. So she holds a BA in international uh, relations from Mount um, Holyoke College and serves on boards for both local and international nonprofit organizations. So there's a whole lot more to all of this, y'all. I kind of like condensed it. And, and they tell their stories in the beginning of this book. You must buy this book. I put the links in all the social media posts that I made and uh, we'll let one of you, do you want to tell Beth about the promotion and uh, of your book right now? Yes, we have, um, we are giving away a free sacred letter reading. Barrett and I, there's the, there's the book, Barrett and I do readings and it's uh, all the details about the readings are on our website. So if you purchase a book, you let us know, send us an email, our emails in the website too. And we will put you in our raffle that will be drawn on December 31st for a free reading. So I didn't read about what your readings are like. So will, will we hear from the afterlife or is it just a reading on our own lives? You want to get oh, sure. So um, what we do is we work with a person who engages us in a personal reading. Um, Beth and I connect around the person for maybe 60, 70 minutes around the loved one. So all we need is the first name, the relationship to the person. Um, Beth and I collect all kinds of information that we write up in several pages. But what comes through at the end of our connection is actual a full sacred letter that's transcribed word for word. I mean, pages that seven pages come through in like six minutes and Beth is like the transcriber um so that's actually word for word from the loved one that they're seeking and it's their profound messages and it's amazing what we're getting and then when we pass it to the person they're it's been verified and they're just they're extraordinary that it's uh, so close to what situations and they can verify the person and so forth yeah, that's interesting. So were all the stories verified and the ones that you put, there's 21 stories, is that correct? Correct. Right. So yeah, there's, go ahead, Beth. <laughs> yes, we have 21. We Where we were able to reach out to people, we did, and we included some of those verifications and the reflections that we put in the book, which is, um, the book was laid out in three parts. And how it came about, it came about organically, where um, Barrett's going to talk about how she and I met. but. Um, our book has three parts and I was laying in bed one night and I felt Louise Hay about two weeks after she passed in our room, in my bedroom. And I, you know, I was laying there unsure of what, what she was doing there and why she chose me, which is what we all think, you know, but um, <laughs> she, she came to me and she gave me the three parts of our book. We had already been working on it. And she said, these are how the, the book's going to be laid out. And these are the three parts. And, um, and we went with that and the whole book has been guided. Um, so where we've come across people who um, we could let them know uh, about the letter, we, we showed it to them and the information was verified through that. Yeah, I like the variety because you have like a teenager that died. I've known girl, um, parents that have lost their kids, you know, to an automobile wrecks and it's just so devastating. Then you have suicide and a lot of people are scared about that because they think, you know, they're going to go to a bad place. And you, know, you had so many different varieties of people and the way they died. That was pretty, that was pretty cool. And yeah. like, yeah. So talk about the suicide one a little bit. Can well, you? you can hear that you can hear the different um, personalities come through in, in the letters. They're different. And, um, you know, we have 
chosen the different letters, but we have about 50 or 60 letters that we had all together. And then we narrowed it down to 21. And we were told we were gonna be publishing seven books all together. And um, we chose the letters that we felt would be the first to come through with, with the guidance that we had. And, um, you know, there's the universal letter, letters, like there's the themes where we have depression, loss, grief, loneliness, and then we have the individual stories. So the book, we laid it out where we have the introduction, then we have the letter, and then if needed, we have the reflection. So we we've, we've heard from people who say, I like this one the best, or this one relates, you know, I relate to this one. Um, but overall, we chose the ones we chose because we spoke we speak to living beyond fear and all of these letters you know show us that there's an afterlife that there is life after we're here um after this life and um it helps we've heard from people say this has lowered my fear reading this book has lowered my fear of death and has lowered my fear about other things yeah. As well as been very healing i mean i think as beth was saying the feedback we've been getting is really quite extraordinary and different people are, depending on where they are in their own life experiences and people that they've lost, um, whether it's parents or children, um, that these letters are comforting, but they're also being an opening for them to heal. Um, and the, the feedback has been extraordinary. Um, Beth and I really work really well. We're kind of in tandem. I think you touched on it, Julie, in the beginning. We were introduced to each other um, through this class in 2016. And uh, we were connecting with each other and it was kind of by chance that we were asked one time to connect around somebody that neither of us knew. I was sitting mm -hmm. at this house on one side and she was on the other and we were connecting without talking to each other, just taking notes. And when we compare the notes at the end, what they were like eerily similar. We were like amazed at how similar the information was. So we were, we said to each other, wow, well, we can combine our energies and we'll just get more information. But what actually came after that were these profound letters. And we realized that Beth and I are kind of a the piece for one another. I am like the scout. For some reason, I can identify the people. They're on this visual stage on my left side. Um, and um, Beth is the transcriber, although she identifies people too. So um, I can see when someone's coming to center stage, I know a letter is to come. And Beth kind of goes into this angst, um, sits at her computer, and again, within sheer minutes, these profound letters come through word for word. And the two of you live in separate states. I want to make sure. Um, we're in the same state. We're in neighboring towns. We live in New Jersey, and we're in neighboring towns. Oh, you're in neighboring towns. Okay, yeah. I thought you're in different states. So, Beth, um, this is going to be kind of sensitive, but a lot of women have miscarriages. They lose their babies. Uh, were you able to communicate with Drew Weiss? I know he does hypnotherapy to your uh, child that was stillborn. Um, well, I had read Brian Weiss's book. I didn't work with him directly. I worked with a grief counselor that was locally. She's the one who gave me Brian Weiss's book. Um, okay. It took me some time. I had to go through the grieving process first. I had to, I spent, you know, days and days um, just grieving and asking those hard questions and, and sobbing and becoming angry and why me and all those, all those things that we do. And, um, and then over time, as um, I, I say, it's the moment you start to live again, no matter what kind of loss you have, I think that is what the process is, that you're just getting by, you're just getting through the day until that one moment when you are ready to go out again into the world. And once I had that moment, I and I uh, was uncovering the spiritual journey that I was on and it was unfolding once I began connecting with those from the afterlife, I thought, wow, I could connect with my son. It took me time because I didn't know what to expect. And when I did, it was actually surprising because he came through as a 30-year-old man. And I thought, wow, is, you know, this is strange. But then over time, we realized that they present themselves and come through in the way that that they, they they do they you know they can present themselves in any age we've seen children we've seen grandparents we've seen 30 year olds so um i was asking for confirmation that mm -hmm. he was with us and 
I've always laughed because I get shown funny images. I get shown um, things that I don't expect, um, which is great for me because that that makes me laugh. And then I lower my defenses and say, okay. And he showed, um, we had gone, I had gone bowling with my husband and two daughters um, mm -hmm. the other night. And um, I said, show me that you're with us. And he showed himself with his arms around my husband and myself. He was in the middle of us at a bowling alley. Aww. And um, I just knew, you know, and he had come to me in other in other ways, mm -hmm. um, through my writing and through other ways. But um, I knew that I'd spoken, I connected with him, and I received other images from him at different points. So we can absolutely connect with our unborn children, whether it's a miscarriage or a stillbirth. Um, it's their soul that we connect with. Awesome. So I Brett, I have a question for you. So. Um, Summer is your dog, and so we have a letter from Summer, but what touched my heart, and which I already believed that animals can take on our illnesses, because I'm always telling people that have sick animals, be careful, because if you're stressed around your animal, it's their job to make you happy, and that's just my belief system, so tell us a little bit about Summer and, his, and this letter from the dog. Okay. Um, Summer is our dog. Um, she lived seven years. She actually passed from the cancer. Um, but she, I think what's extraordinary is, is you touched on again, is that our animals are so connected to us and they absorb so much of what goes on in our household. They're such a harmony for us. But the letter that came through from Summer is unusual because it was actually channeled when she was still alive. And she was speaking to my daughter's cancer. Uh, my daughter had cancer when she was 14. And Summer's letter was addressing that she was absorbing that cancer. My daughter has um, you know, gone into remission and she's now 21 in college and so forth. Um, but the dog did um, from her letter to, to take that cancer um, from, from her. So I think it speaks a little bit to the soul contract, you know, things that happen before we come here, we don't understand it. There's such a far bigger picture is um, what we're seeing in a lot of these letters that they're sharing, this bigger plan. And I think that was something that Summer and, and Sarah had, had done before they had incarnated here. So uh, your daughter has no cancer or she's in remission. She has no cancer. Right. And your MS is gone too? No, I still have MS. Okay. It's experience. Um, but for me, again, the MS really was um, a gift. I, I shut down with MS in 2010. Uh, about two years later, my daughter got, can you know, was diagnosed with cancer, but I felt like it prepared me. I think there's so many things that are adversities in life that aren't always fun. They're painful. They're not pretty. You still have to deal with them, but they prepare us for things that are to come. They are our gifts. And I think so much, again, is choices too. I mean, I'm surrounded by so much love. I have so much support. Um, I still have MS, but I feel very good. Um, but I feel that um, love is was so healing. The love that I received during Sarah's cancer, the love we all received, and the love I continue to receive during my MS um, is so healing. And, and it really is reflected too in these letters that are in the, the, the uh, living beyond fear, how powerful love is. That is beautiful. So does anybody want to talk about plane crash? Um, sure. So so on my visual stage, as I was saying, that I we have so many people that are interested in talking with us that it became almost overwhelming. So I actually this is a waiting line. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there is. Like a long machine. So that there's order, everyone has takes a ticket, they can change their ticket around, but not everyone's trying to talk at the same time. As we know, no one can hear anybody if everyone's talking. <laughs> um, but the thing that was so different about the plane crash, I said to Beth, was on my visual stage, I could see a whole group of people, they were all holding the number one, and then they moved collectively to center stage, which means that the letter's to come. Um, that letter was very profound. It speaks to loving within the chaos, that there is so much going on in our world today. There's so much uncertainty. There's so much darkness. There's so much um, chaos. Yet behind all that darkness is so much light waiting to be lifting us to release it and to heal ourselves and to heal one another since we're so connected. Um, 
And so their message was very uh, um, addressing the darkness, but addressing the power that we have to bring light into the world through just being who we are, just being our highest self, to being our love and feeling one another and knowing our connection with one another, how and how we're, we affect each other so much, so profoundly. So it was, it's an amazing letter. When I receive divine guidance, I, I, I hear it, but it's not a voice. Like it's not a talking voice, although I've had the talking voice like three times in my life. Do you actually hear a voice or is it coming across like a ticker tape or how are you receiving your messages? I can, I can speak to that. I, I see images and then I also hear the voice. And when I'm typing the letter, when I'm doing the automatic writing, um, I, I type it word for word. And sometimes I'll read it over and it's not even the greatest English sometimes, you know, because we talk in ways different than if we were writing a, a perfectly crafted letter. So uh, there might be little phrases in there that I hear that I always put in the letter because this is their speaking. And those phrases have, people have said to us, that's how I knew it was him. That's yeah. how I knew it Certain words, and then the examples that they use. The, the, the examples that they use mean something, even though I don't necessarily know it. If they give me a metaphor, um, so I I do both. I I will receive an image sometimes to go off on, or and then I hear I hear songs, I hear lyrics, I hear phrases, and then the letters. I hear the whole the whole letter word for word. What about foreign languages? Do they have an interpreter or? I think the thing that's extraordinary, so when people pass, they shed their form and they move into um, another expanse. Um, so there is no limitation with language. Okay. There's no limitation. They could be in many different places, they'll tell us. Um, so they're in a much more universal, expanded understanding. Um, not that they know everything that they're sharing, but they're sharing an expanded, bigger picture view of things. And um, again, the letters sort of speak to they're almost like cliff notes for how to live this life more fully, more um, lovingly, and to release things that maybe we carry through us from other times, um, as well as what we carry through us with this lifetime. So Frank was speaking to a con to the contracts. Um, the letter from Frank: uh, We have a contract to fulfill both in life and in each other. We can fulfill them or break them when our time is up, something like that. Mm -hmm. So we come in with contracts before we're born. Is that what you're seeing? And then yeah. he's saying we can change them if we want? Yeah, well, we, we come in with the contracts. We always have personal choice. We can fulfill our contract. Um, there, there are times where we could fulfill a contract and still hang out where we shouldn't. We linger, we, we keep a relationship that maybe we should move on for from. And then sometimes we choose not to even go into that contract. We don't always do it knowingly, most of the time we don't. Um, but we, yeah, we have contracts with people who are in our life, people we've agreed to fulfill um, to help each other. We're all here to evolve, to learn, to grow. So even my biggest lesson has been those who have been difficult. You know, it, you know those are those people are our biggest teachers. Those people are are the ones that that help us to grow and to understanding the big picture and understanding the contract has allowed me to see it from a higher perspective. To to be able to forgive and be able to move on. Okay. Well, do you guys have any favorites that you want to talk about? Or is there something open? I actually, so in the book, as Beth said, there's 21 letters. So two of those people are people that have not passed or in the, um, when they channeled the letter. Um, one was Summer the dog. The other person is Mariana. And um, I hear, like Beth too, I hear my left side, my left ear. And in the morning, I get almost like a tutoring from guys and um and one morning I heard from my guides that I, that Beth and I, we could speak with people in coma. And um, anyway, so what happened was we found this woman who I was told two weeks later, she was in a coma and I could hear her in my left ear saying, yes, yes, you remember me, remember me. Um, so she was in a coma. She wasn't dead. Um, and she was saying, I'm not dying. And um, I communicated with Beth, and within a few minutes, um, we had this profound letter that we shared with her, um, with her children. But the thing that's so extraordinary about the Mariana letter 
and she speaks to consciousness. And I think that is such an underlying theme across all these letters, mm -hmm. that consciousness, she says, it's our mind that can go anywhere at any time with anyone. We've studied the brain so much in, you know, in our world, but it's the mind, it's the consciousness. Um, and it's our consciousness that is this extraordinary, that opens up tremendous possibilities, not only here, but our consciousness appears to go with us to the other realms when we pass, and it still continues. Um, so that was a, a, just a profound letter. Um, she spoke to autistic children. She was talking about um, being in a coma. Um, she was also talking about um, you know, different um, levels of that awareness and consciousness. And I thought that was one of my, that was a profound letter. They're all profound, but that was extraordinary because it really touches on consciousness. My favorite letter was Summer's letter. It was, I was, it was, um, I have a special place in my heart for animals, but also she was, she opened me up so dramatically. When I first met Summer, she was speaking to me and I had never, I've had dogs my whole life and I've never been able to hear anything from any of my dogs. I've known things intuitively, but we went for a walk and the entire time she was chatting away and and giving me messages and it was amazing and it it truly opened up you know my any skepticism that I had left about this whole process I I knew the things that she was telling me there's no way she could know about things in my life and the people in my life and it was amazing it was amazing I mean I love you feel like once we connect with with a spirit we have them in our you know in our circle and that we can, we can feel them and connect with them that much easier. So we, we feel a special connection with all of them. It's like you love all your children, right? <laughs> you don't have any favorites. But you know, the summer for me really opened opened me up. So I think one more thing about this the energy that like Beth was saying how each you know, once they, once Beth and I connect with the spirit, they're in so they get it's like they have our number and we have theirs so we can go back and can reconnect with them um we're aware of the different of differences of the energy they're very specific um but in this book when reading it and with the feedback that we've received from readers so far is they feel the energy they feel the connection one of the things that we also did in the book in addition to placing these sacred letters that are transcribed word for word from the spirit is before that we've included a short introduction of how that person, how that spirit came uh, into Beth's and my awareness. Um, just to sh so you have a little bit of background and then you go into the letter, but um, you know, just profound. Yeah, and I will, I will embody the spirit during the uh, transcription of the letter. And afterward, I still feel them for hours and then slowly they will fade away. So when I, um, when I wrote, about the cheerleader, I uh, Lisa Rose. I felt like a I felt like a teenager. I walked around. I was saying things. I was acting like a teenager, and then I became aware of it, and I and I knew it was her. And I just realized that that is my process. I will embody the spirit, and then slowly they will they will fade. So how do you keep it from like you want to have a family dinner and you're out to dinner and you don't want to hear anything or you know you just want to have quiet? Do you, are you able to turn it off or does it just pop in any time? Um, I feel like I'm able to turn it off. I can um, I, I go to that place it, unless a letter is supposed to come and then I I'm filled with an angst, a, a feeling that I have to sit down at the computer and it has to come through, um, and sometimes. For whatever reason, I get those feelings in the shower. I, you know, I get messages. I know a lot of people have talked about that before. That you know, when we're in the shower, um, you know, we're relaxed. The water, um, our vulnerability. We're naked. You know, and these messages come through. So I have gotten out of the shower mid shower so many times, and I have to go down and sit and write um, because these I'm starting to hear, and I don't want to lose it. Um, but if I'm out and about, I can I can focus on what's going on around me and 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 turn it off. And when I can, I ask Barrett to step in and and <laughs> keep yeah, it on. I'm a, I'm a gatekeeper. <laughs> <laughs> can you speak into your phone and record it if it's coming really quickly and you don't have a typewriter? I have done that. I, in fact, I was away and I had a letter that was coming through, um, and I the entire thing is on my phone. And then when I got home, I transcribed yeah. it because I had I it, I had to get it. Wow. 
This is so amazing. The book is so fun to read. You guys have to buy this book, get the message out, share with your friends. Uh, we only have about a minute left. So who wants to, is there anything special you want to say? I just want to finish saying that um, we, you know, we've been told we're a voice for the voiceless. And that has uh, really come through in our book, you know, us connecting with people who have passed. Um, we can connect with autistic children who cannot speak. We can connect with with trees, with nature, with animals. Um, so that is our passion. And that I believe that what we've done for our book, we we know it's our mission and that's what we've done. And for more information, our, we have a website, Julia. It's um, www.the sacredletters.com. So if, they, if the readers or the viewers want any more information, they can go on our website. Yeah, and that's how they can contact you. And it'll be in all the uh, posts that I did on Facebook and I'll post around and put all that information. And I hear that there might be more books to come. That's what we were talking about. So I can't wait. And I'm so so blessed to have you. Divine guidance led me to you. Um, that's how I find all my authors. And I, of course, believe in the afterlife, but it's so beautiful that you were brave enough and you came out and you put this together to help everybody else understand that death is a beautiful, can be a beautiful thing, even though we grieve them, they're not here, but just knowing that they're still around. Yeah. It's a comfort. It really is. So, thank you so much. Julia. Thank you. And I will hopefully be talking to you guys soon. Thank you so much. Bye bye, everybody. Bye.